fans of the Horus Heresy, thank you very much for joining me for another Model, Rules and Tactics review and today we're looking at the brand new Mechanicum Volterax Stratos Automata by Forge World. So here we have the first flying monstrous creature to feature uh, in the Horus Heresy and I have to admit what a fascinating model this is. Um, it's been out a couple of weeks now and yeah it's quite unlike anything um, that Forge World has done thus far for a certainly 30k and uh, and in general although uh, you know everyone's going to make the comparison with a certain flying demon engine of Nurgle. So what I'm going to do for this view, review is um, we'll, I'll take you through the, the build of the uh, Volterax itself uh, some hints and tips around assembly and what the kit quality was like uh, and then we'll discuss the actual rules in the game based on the experimental rules that are currently available on Forge World's website. Okay so let's start off with the build. Um, so it's on a um, it's on this flight stand. Um, the flight stand um, obviously there's no there's no sort of recess or attachment point for this so it just sits on it. So I've attached this using a two-part epoxy glue, um, some quick setting aerodite because um, I don't want that to come off uh, at any stage in the future. So uh, yeah, safe rather than sorry there. So let's just uh, pop this guy for base. See if we can achieve this. There you go, it's a good start. And get a closer look and yeah. I have to admit this is this is a fun model to build. Um, it, it's a very it's a fun model to build and it's an interesting model to build and it's one of the building projects I've most enjoyed uh, in recent times. Um, yeah, very interesting. Uh, kit quality on this um, was pretty good. Um, I, if you saw my unboxing review, you'll remember that there was some mold slippage on the body unit. And also on the Arc Blaster, uh, I got both of those exchanged at Forge World. Uh, so excellent customer service there as usual. So build, um, well, yeah, it's quite a. There's a lot of parts to this. Um, you've got the main body. You've got these missile launchers. Several parts that make up these directional thrusters. You've got the whole sensor and weapon range array. You've got the mechadendrites, um, and then you've got these directional. Uh, attitudinal thrusters located on the rear of the uh, Volterax as well. And if we just as I get a bit of an inside look, this is a uh, I'm not glued on the front cowl yet. There you can see all the detail inside that I've. Um, I'm going to leave it unattached until this is painted, because as, as you can see, there's an enormous amount of detail in there. All right, let's pop it back on. Right, so assembly, a couple of things. So let's uh, talk about the actual preparation for the build. Um, you can see on the underside of the Volterax there is an antenna array with six small downward facing antenna. And that's, I, I love the style of that. Um, if you look on modern, um, some mo modern military jets, uh, helicopters and, and vehicles, you do see these sorts of arrays. Um, so I, I do like the style of that. Um, now, when the model comes, there is uh, there are a series of uh, resin shims that sit between uh, these antennas. So yeah, you need a nice sharp knife and some careful knife knife skills um, to remove those. Um, a couple of other delicate prep bits. So looking at the um, rear of the Volterax, you can see there's a series of tubes um, that uh, these upper tubes that feed uh, un into the, under the cowl uh, from this um, cylindrical unit at the back with the manhole cover on it as I like to call it. Um, there are a series of shims on those as well um, and that took some fine knife work to remove all those uh, but it took a bit of time, but I'm glad I did it because um, the detail looks great uh, with those um, tubes 
properly exposed. Right, pinning. I did quite a lot of pinning on this model because it is quite delicate. Um, and I've uh, particularly used a technique of sort of, of, of opposing pinning because a lot of the joints here are pivots. Um, so if you do just lateral pins that follow the line of the rotation of the, rotation of the pin, um, they're not necessarily that strong because they can still be rotated. So um, I'm going to post a vid I've posted a video, um, a, a little how-to about how to do an oblique pin. And I've used a pleat to, in terms of pinning, I did two pins um, holding these two uh, wings on. Uh, so one on each side, two pins holding each frame, each engine frame in place, which go from here to here. Uh, and then a pin, an oblique pin, in the front and the rear of each thruster. Uh, and those those should prevent this ever coming apart or any of these parts being able to um, rotate. Um, oblique pins in these Havoc launches as well, to so those again are on pivots, that could break. Um, one large pin that runs through the sensor array uh, and, and up into the cowling there to, to hold that in place because there's um, a fair amount of uh, weight around that and it's the sort of thing if it got knocked it could break. So let's have a look at, let's just have a, a little look at some more of the details. I mean, yeah, as I say, this is a, it's a beautifully detailed model. Um, there's cables snaking all over it uh, and then you've got these all these wonderful engine engine designs and details. Um, you've got these fans that are mounted on top of the the main thrusters. They're nice. You've got some little vents there as well. A couple of targeting arrays and you've got this, um, I think this is called a, uh, ooh, just bear with me a second. Let me open up the rule, the building pamphlet. What do they call this? They called it a servo scope. There you go. It has a servo scope on one side of the um, on one side of the um, model. Uh, you got the the weapons of Sathano, uh, habit launchers, and then you have got the arc blaster as well. And these two nice mechadendrites. So yeah, let's pop it back on there. Back on its base, but yeah, as I say, this is a it's a fascinating model to build. Um, it's a fun model to build. Um, I'd certainly certainly recommend it to you um, if you're a keen mechanic and player. And you know, there's some value in just a, as an enjoyable building project as well. So uh, okay, let's talk about the rules for this um, intriguing uh, robot uh, because it is it is a first. Um, it's a first model with the Cybernetica Cortex rule um, that is also a flying monstrous creature. So, uh, stats. So, a Voltarax is a, it's a maniple. Uh, the base cost is 175 points uh, for a single Voltarax. Um, and it has a profile that is uh, the same as a Castellax, with one exception, which is its strength is only four, where a Castellax is six. Uh, apart from that, the base stats are identical to a Castellax. So if you're thinking about the toughness of this, think a Castellax flying. Uh, it has the same armor save of 3 plus as well. Uh, you can add up to two additional Voltarax to give a full strength maniple a 3 automata. Um, right. What weapons has it got? So, for its main gun here, is the Voltarax Arc Blaster. Now, I'm just gonna do go back to the model side of this quickly because I want to uh, just show. So there's the Arc Blaster. You see this sort of got the, the gun array and there's capacitor perhaps at the top. Um, they've taken the styling of that from 40K um, Skitari miniatures. And if we, here we've got a sprue of Skitari from the start collecting Skitari box, which uh, was an impulse buy. Um, and if we look at the, here we have an arc blaster and we can see the similar sort of design. Uh, the, the Voltraxes use the same design cues. Um, 
as we're on that weapon. And also if we look at the arc pistol here, you know, again, we can see some similarities. I like that. And uh, it's one of the rare examples of where uh, recent GW styling has been picked up by um, Forge World for use on one of their models. So yes, anyway, uh, back to the rules. So the Vultrax Arc Blaster is a 24 inch range, strength 6, AP5, heavy 3 um, gun. It has a shred rule and haywire. Uh, in addition to that weapon, it has two uh, Sethano pattern habit launchers. The Sethano has a range of 48, strength 5, AP5. Uh, it is heavy 2 with a 3 inch blast. It's twin linked and it has a special rule of Sethano Gin. And Sethano Gin forces a successful cover save to be re rolled. Um, what other equipment does it have then? Uh, it has an enhanced targeting array, so ballistic skill as standard is at 5, with minus 1 to cover saves. It has a flare shield, which is unusual, so all weapon attacks are at minus 1 strength. And it has a searchlight. Special rules are Cybernetica Cortex, um, Stratos Automata variant, Reactor Blast and my, Night Vision. So the Cybernetica Cortex Stratos Automata variant um, means that it, it doesn't have the normal tug, um, methodical rule. So basically it frees up the movement if it's not in Cortex controller range, which is kind of a necessity for a flying unit. Um, and the target priority special rule gets adjusted and you can always uh, attempt to attack the nearest enemy flyer instead of ground model. <coughs> Excuse me. So, um, yeah, basically you never fall, you can't get it tar pitted by an opponent, you know, just luring you with a handful of infantry. Um, upgrades, um, you can get uh, blessed auto simulacra for 10 points. So that allows you to cover a wound each, a lost wound on a roll of a six each turn. Um, and you can equip it with um, Battle Automata Power Blades for 15 points. So that gives it the rending special rule and extra attack. Unfortunately, um, you can't make this a Paragon of Metal, which I think is an absolute crying shame because it, this, along with the um, Thanatar Calyx, um, would have been an absolute ideal candidate uh, for the Paragon of Metal rule, but uh, unfortunately not. So it's a fast attack choice um, in the Mechanicum Tagmata army list. Um, so how do you use this intriguing vehicle? Or robot, should I say? Um, because clearly it, it, it lacks a knockout... <laughs> Excuse me. It lacks a knockout high strength punch weapon, um, but I suppose you need to, I guess, look a little bit beneath the surface in how to use it. I think you can play it in two ways. You can use it. Uh, you can use it to attack vehicles, taking advantage of the haywire effect of the arc blaster gun, um, and you can equally well use that against flyers, so enemy fighters um, and ground targets as well. And with a heavy three weapon um, and ballistic skill five, it's not an unrealistic chance to be able to knock a dreadnought out in a single attack, a single attack, uh, or bring down an enemy fighter. And certain enemy fighters, which only have two hull points, are actually quite vulnerable to that. And you also have a nice synergy um, with the enhanced targeting array, reducing jinx saves by one point as well. Um, so yeah, you can go after vehicles, but you're only using one weapon there. I suppose you could take, you could use the, um, you could attack, attempt to attack enemy flyers in close combat as well. Um, you can attack enemy ground units, so infantry units, using basically a volume of fire approach. The habit launchers, you're going to, you know, you, you could potentially land twenty wounds. Um, onto a unit with those, given the number of blasts, twin linking that you've got. Um, the, I suppose you're not going to you're not going to kill masses of space marines and terminators and the like. Um, but you know it's decent firepower. Um, even solar auxiliary are pretty resilient to it because you haven't got any high AP. 
If you're fighting the militia list, though, this will be absolute death to militia. You will kill loads and loads um, of guys wearing standard flak armor. And the re-roll on a successful cover say there uh, is going to really hurt them as well. Um, you, it could be moderate. It will be moderately effective against enemy battle robots as well. Um, the shred, <coughs> excuse me, the shred rule on the art blaster coupled with haywire um, means you can do a decent number of wounds to robots. So if you're fighting some of the lighter robots um, like the Vorax, uh, that could um, that could be a nice thing to target as well. Um, but I think I think for me the main the main use at the moment seems to be uh, just the sheer speed of the thing and making use of the art blaster to um, rain on your opponent's vehicles day um, or harass the heck out of enemy infantry. And if you went into gliding mode with this thing, um, it's it's tough enough. Um, it's tough enough that it's not going to be easily killed. Um, particularly when you consider it has a flare shield, um, which um, is reducing weapons strength by one. Good. So, yep, yeah, I think that's just about everything I'm going to say about this. Um, I'm going to do a, another video on the Volterax, and I'm going to do a video about counters to the Volterax, because um, I can see um, the introduction of these things being a bit of a uh, nasty shock to players of the Legions and the Solar Auxilia. Um, so I'm going to do a video thinking about the tactics of how to um, mount an effective air defence against these guys, uh, having thought about how to use them to uh, wipe, your, wipe your opponent out. Anyway, so I hope you found that interesting. Um, interesting review of this absolutely fascinating and lovely model. Um, I, I, I would definitely recommend it. Uh, I've really enjoyed building it. It's been a real fun build. Uh, and the end model is, uh, is brilliant. I really like it. Thanks very much for listening. Uh, I'll speak to you later and goodbye.